Okay, so as you can probably see, we've um, done a little bit of work here. So all I'm doing here is picking out um, some of the colors. Now I'm doing this freehand, but you could mask it up as if we've done over here. So we're doing it both ways, but for speed, I'm just doing this little bit for the moment freehand. Now this is the intermediate color of the two. So we've got the, la the lightest color, this is the darkest, then we'll mask up again for the hardest color, and we can touch in as need, but for speed, it's easier to work myself across the entire aircraft doing it sort of freehand. So we've already done this bit of wing here already, and we're working our way across. Now, like I said, because this is the old, um, you know, um, hobby colour paints, they do take a while to dry, so just be careful handling it. If you hold on to it for too long, you're going to leave a fingerprint. But for doing this type of work, I can get in there quite well. So all we're literally doing is sort of going around at the moment and say, and blowing in this colour and okay I can get in very very tight with this airbrush it's got the 0.2 needle in it um, and it can handle this type of camera work but it's still not sharp enough for what we need but as I said just for speed we can do the intermediate nice little tip I'm not filling up the entire airbrush full of it we're literally just doing a cap full and I'm spraying it neat the reason for neat very high air pressure but I can get extremely close to the model then uh, and do it but I'll say personal preference you know obviously you can thin it down I'm spraying this 30 psi neat paint and I'm literally just a few millimeters away from the surface very little pull back on the trigger if you do have trouble with spitting and things like that I haven't in this case because the temperature in here is 18.2 degrees but you can get something called a flow enhancer and this will stop it sticking and spitting so if you do find you're in a very hot climate um, and it starts to dry and they need a little bit it ruins your spray pattern and things like that. A little bit of flow enhancer works every time. So all we're doing is say we're going along and doing this sort of medium, this middle colour uh, for the moment. So all we're doing is just working our way over the entire model. I've got the, the little instructions probably just out of view um, for you at the moment. So okay, what we're going to do, we're just going to work our way around uh, and do all these ones. So we've got to do this one now, uh, atop of this air intake. So as I said, being careful how we shoot and spray uh, and all the rest of it. So we're just going to pop ourselves in, so double check everything you do, I tend to find always works best. Okay, and then this little one is just going to run, is a line that sort of comes along here. So what I do, first of all we do it roughly, is just pop it in as a rough spray. So we just get the other camera going. So we just pop this one in. So we can get it in, and that works out a line that we don't want to cross over. Okay, so that's that one in now. So what we can do is start to top fill. Too much, way too much. And say, got a bit of a splat happened on there. If we pull you in a little bit, you probably see it just on here. So what we do, just dry it off. Not too close, because we don't want to make it run, but we can just dry it down a bit. And what we do, we'll disguise it, we'll hide that. Okay, top of this intake. In just like that, and then this one is gonna work its way right over the top. So it comes up to near this top pattern. So we're not gonna go right up to it, but we're gonna go extremely close and then it comes to about here. So we can just backfill. A little bit more power on the old trigger. And we can just fill that in just a little bit. Okay, then we can work out. We've got a deep, dark green colour is going to come in all amongst this, but also we've got the light colour as well. So what we need to do is just pop a line in just down the back here, just a little bit. Okay, and then we're just going to fill up. So we're going to come up alongside what we need to do. So we just pop a little line, and then we're back fill it. So we're just taking a. A little segment at a time if you like we're not trying to do the entire thing going right over it just do a little bit where you know it all runs to and this one's got a little bit of a, a little guy that runs off so we just blow out so we'll make that little finger which appears on the instructions showing it just like that so what I'm going to do, I'm going to carry on working right the way over, same thing, right the way over the model with this, and then when we come back together, we can then mask up and tidy up all this camera work and get that final colour on. Okay, so we've been doing a little bit of experimentation and everything else to try and get the best way for the camo. Now, as we said, we've experimented on this one here by using, um, this is just 40mm Tamiya tape, teared 
and put in. And to be honest, it's not too bad at all. It works. Not exactly brilliant though. So what I've done for this tail, which I think you agree looks a lot, lot better, um, three-tone paintwork. Obviously, we've got the beige on first, just as we've done on the rest of the wing. And um, for this dark colour, what I've actually been using is white tack. Now, white tack is the same as blue tack, apart from it's oil-free. So you don't get any nasties in your uh, your paintwork and all your rest of it. Um, and it doesn't leave as much gooiness on the surface. With all blue tack, make sure it's nice and warm. The hotter it goes, the more it sticks, the better it is to go on. If you want it to be low tack and you don't want to stick too much on there, then obviously just lean off it a bit, let it cool down, then put it on and it won't be quite as sticky. What you tend to do, well the way I've been doing it I should say, to obviously get this tail, which I must admit is looking absolutely lovely. If I show you here on the wing and then I'll work through it with you. So actually what we've got, we take our tack and we're just going to roll it up into a sausage. Like this, okay. And then all we're going to do, we're just going to come along, break a bit off, okay. Thin it out again, because trust me you're going to go thinner and thinner and thinner. Okay, and then what we're going to do, if we pick out um, the beige, um, it's probably the best way, um, and then what we can do is actually start putting it on. So you, if we work around the beige colour, so we have our beige like this, you take your actual your uh, blue tack, have a look at the references and roughly work out a shape to that type of uh, design pattern. Now obviously I'm not doing it exactly the same as it is, because to be honest that would take forever and it'd be quicker to do it by hand, literally painting it on by hand. Doing it this way is a little bit of artistic license into the way it's done. So what we're going to do, we're going to start over here, okay. We're not going to worry too much about this tip, to be honest, we're going to work a little bit closer up the wing and we're going to bring it in like that. So what we will shall do is, we've got the light sandy colour, so we have one comes down through here, so we just make it thin because it's a nice thin area. That's going to go on and we'll give it a bit of a pat down. Okay, it comes down here, we've got somewhat of a lump down there. Okay, and then it's going to feather off, so then we can break it. Okay, and then for the other side we've got... Just going to see how all this comes in. So then on the inside, make it nice and thin because we've got some thin lines. Obviously when we squash it down we're going to have problems. So we've got one that comes across here. Okay, it's going to come in here. It's going to run along all down this side. And then it's going to come in. And then we just squash this out. So what you're roughly doing is making shapes but make them too smaller or smaller than the area that you're going to want to actually paint a mask on. Now obviously we've got this bit in the middle, so we can just plop some down over the top. And this area in here. Okay, so you roughly come along something like this. Okay, then taking the back end of a, uh, a pen, or you could probably use, he says desperately looking for his paint stirrer, which he seems to have lost or put it around. You could use, say, back of a pair of tweezers, a paint stirrer, cocktail stick, just don't scratch your paintwork. Okay, then we come along, and then this has got to be squashed out a lot more. Okay, push it all down, and that'll flatten it a little bit, and it'll just make it easier to work with. Okay, then all we're going to do is push down and pull out, so you get little areas effect like this. Okay, so you just sort of come along, can push it down, you can push it inwards and then push down and then pull out. Okay, these areas all around here a little bit inward. So if we just pull these in a little bit, push down these over here. Okay, and when you've got it thin, you can manipulate it and push it out, pull it back exactly how you want to do it. Okay and roughly work your way along. Now the trouble is all this paint is still a little bit tacky everywhere else so I just have to be a bit careful how I handle it okay so then have a look and obviously use some references up here as I say we've got this little nook coming up here comes down a little bit all of these tend to push out or pull back you know so we can just work our way around the area Okay, and if it's not looking right, or you're not happy, then just pull it back and start again. Okay, and when you've got it all on there, just give it a bit of a pat over. Okay. 
Okay, so there we go. That's all on there now. So what we're going to do, we've got it just up here in the colour cup. Let's get rid of the runs on the side. We've got a tiny amount here. It's quite thick. Um, it's probably about 75% paint to thinners. And all we're going to do is from 90 degrees from above, just gently blow in, keeping it quite dry. As soon as it looks wet, we're going to come off. It's going to go all around, very lightly, just dusting over the top as we go all this area there we go okay then if you have got pre-shading in there and things like that you can stop at any time And there we go. So we've just cut to air to dry that off a bit. Just like so. Now remember, you can come back at any point and just tidy this up. And what you do is just very carefully peel it off. And hopefully it will reveal a nice tight camo pattern below. Something like that. So there we go. Now obviously we've got other colours going on there. We've got the sand and the other one. And as you work across, um, obviously it all becomes a little bit more. Because obviously we've got half of it done on this side. We've got to do the other half yet. And then what we do is work our way in stages right the way over until we're over. Until we end up looking like the tail does. Just like that. So it's just a matter of time. Playing with your shapes. Poking them in. And like down here. Not exactly happy how this tan line is. So we'll probably come back and redo it. But I want it all to totally dry off before we do. So I'm going to work my way right the way over the entire model now. So if you want to watch... And you can follow me as I go through the entire spraying process. Okay, so now all the paintwork is actually done, um, I hope you agree, it's actually a lovely camo paintwork. But obviously when you look at the uh, instructions, like in here, okay, uh, this looks very green down here, as you can imagine, and looks very good. 
Mine, on the other hand, looks a little bit brown, and then when you see the real thing, you can see that it is brown. So the colour callouts are correct for the right colours for the actual main camo work, and so are the actual the main ones to the real aircraft. It's just obviously something's been a lot bit lost in printing with the actual um, instruction sheet, and these colours obviously are a lot lighter, things like that. Now you could say um, the argument that these have been bleached down and things like that, a more worn type of look, but really when you're looking at these greens, and especially these light tan colours, uh, it's nothing like this sort of three-tone green, uh, leaf green colour compared to the real thing. So the callouts are correct, don't worry about them too much for the actual camo work. Where it does fall apart, as we spoke about a little bit earlier, is for doing this shark business because obviously this blue, as you can see in the real photo there, the real thing, it's very blue, but when you compare it for what they're calling out, which is this grey colour here, obviously this is grey, you know, this is green grey, nothing like blue whatsoever. So that's the problem with that one. So we need to obviously go through our colours and have a look around. Now looking at my rack in front, which you might be able to see on my new shows and things like that, I've got all my paints in front of me here. Um, and I'm going through them all and sort of right, okay, trying to find the right colours. Obviously we want it to be sort of subtle. We want it, want it to be like the aircraft is in real life. We don't want it to be really bright and in your face. So what I'm going to use actually is ocean grey. Now it says grey, but it's a very much a blue grey. Um, and on camera, like you're probably seeing here, it looks a little bit sort of more grey than blue. What also you can do is just add a few drops of blue to it. So you take, you know, just some hobby colour, some of their normal blue, and add a little bit to it just to give it a little bit more of a blue touch. Because when you put blue next to this one, it looks grey. But when you put grey next to it, it looks blue. So it's one of those funny colours sort of, sort of in between. So what we're doing now, we're masking up. We've masked off this tail area here completely and everything else, because what we've done, we've done a little bit of touch-up work just down here on the back to extend this leaf pattern down. Want to check the references coming on. And obviously we had a little bit of pre-shading was a little bit too strong in here. So we masked up that area and we've taken care of that. What we can now do is obviously mask up along this edge as well because down below here this is where the interesting bit's going to be we've got to do this the greys and the blues and we've got to freehand in the actual um the, the fins if you like and things like that on this particular one the front edge obviously we've got a hard edge is going to run, run along this front now the thing is with this hard edge, it's going to run right along and then it sort of blends into the cockpit area and then we've got to have his eye down the front here and things like that. So we're going to follow both the, the, the real reference photo of this one and the instructions or try and work something between the two. The dorsal fin on this one is going to come above this masked area but it's something we'll put in afterwards once we're in and happy we'll cut one out of a mask and work through it. So at the moment what I'm going to do is just mask up these top areas here. So for that, we're just going to use some normal tape. We're just going to place it down the middle, okay, of this one up here. And then what we're doing, we're just covering over. Okay, we've got that air scoop on the top there, so we want to protect that. And what we want to cover is the inside of this air intake. Okay, so we're just going to push him in like that, come in with a pair of tweezers and just nudge it all down a little bit to get that in. This one on the top here, we're gonna blend in, but what I wanna make sure is, obviously I've spent all this time on this camo work, I don't wanna lose it. So we're just gonna put a little bit of tape in here, then we're gonna mask over these entire wings and the fuselage and things like that, purely because of that, I put so much time into this camo work, if I was to get overspray on it now, I'd cry. So what we do, a little technique with it, put it on the back of your hand, pull it off, obviously avoid taking your hairs with it, Go with the direction, but what you're leaving is actually skin cells, as horrible as it sounds on this one. But what it will do, it just makes them low tack. Doing it on your jeans and jumpers, all well, but you get fibres, um, and they can end up in your paintwork and all sorts. But when we come along like we do now, we can put it on. It's very much a low tack, so when we peel off, we know we're not going to take the entire wing with it when we go. So we just do this half. So we're just going to go around and mask up absolutely everywhere on the model and just protect all this paintwork. Okay, so we've got a little mixing cup here. What we've got in here is um, one uh, and a half mils of actual uh, the grey, and this is the XF82 um, Ocean Grey. There again, when you get it out, it doesn't look blue enough, so it's one of those things, it's trial and error, it's what it's all about. So what we're gonna do is pour in probably one mil of the blue. Okay, just like that. Let me just grab a cocktail stick. And we'll give these two a mix around and see what we get. Because what we want is a a nice blue. So good old mix with this. And what we're getting is a blue, but it's not the right blue. I know this sounds really odd, but it's 
what we want to do is have a blue, if you like, a sharp blue, but we want to knock it back a little bit so it's more of a, a grey blue than a blue. Now it's actually coming through quite nicely. Okay, so we're quite happy with how that is at the moment. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to do a little test area first. Okay, so we're just going to take a tiny bit of thinners, a couple of drops of thinners, just into the top here, so it hasn't got the cap on at all. And then all we're going to do is just add a drop or so into the colour cup, straight in the top like that. Give it a good mix in there, which I know this isn't an ideal way of doing it, but for doing a little test area it saves all that cleaning out of lava that can go with it. So what we'll do, we're just going to move him out of the way as well. We'll just test a little bit down here to see what colour we get him. Not bad at all. So what we'll do for the moment, because this is almost, it's just really a test to see what we've got here, we're just going to blow in the nose because this top nose section is the right blue, it's all going to be blue. Okay, so what it'll do is just give us a sort of a, a insight to how it's going to be. And we can see what the colour is going to look like. So we're just going to blow in the nose. Just the top of the nose, just like that. Okay, we'll put that over in a holder. Give it a bit of a blow. Okay, and I must admit I'm pretty well happy with that because what we're going to do, we're going to have, obviously it's going to be the dark blue across the top, okay, and then we're actually going to grey it out to be lower like a shark has. So if you've ever seen pictures of the sharks, you know they're obviously top set coats or when you look down upon uh, from above like an aircraft, very dark, very hard to spot on the ocean floor. Obviously from the bottom they're very light looking up. It's going to be exactly the same way with this particular one. Okay, so what we'll do now, we're going to take our life in our hands, okay, and we're just going to blow in this top half of the shark. So what we're going to do is just literally going to imagine a line that's going to run somewhat along here, okay, and we're going to try and get in there and do that. Now this mix we've got made up in here is a little bit thick, but I'm not worried about it because obviously the grey is going to do 90% of the work. So what we'll do, we're just going to carry this on freehand. just along here and then obviously we're going to have the gill slits are going to be down here so it's going to come further south okay lots of it down here around this intake it's pretty much way to halfway okay things like the actual fins and that I'm going to do freehand um, well, not a free hand, but probably with a mask afterwards. Now, it's just looking at how these systems work along the back here. So we're pretty much sure we're all in there. We're happy of how that comes along, just like that. Okay, this is ramblings of a madman doing this. Okay, now underneath here, they're going to come down the back. So we're just going to, hopefully you can see this on the various cameras. Okay, but we're going to try and bring this as it sort of is on the real thing. It sort of comes down and say, don't panic too much because we can tidy this up with the grey afterwards. But there we go, that's what I'm aiming to do here. Okay, so there we go. Now we're still very wet, but what we're going to do, we're going to have a go straight over the top. Now, in hindsight, probably the best way to do this would be actually to draw it on a bit of plastic card and give it a whirl and see if it works or not, and see how the uh, how the colours look. But uh, me being me, I like to rush in. Okay, thinner's already gone in there, so we're going to take some of the grey now. This is just going to be the Ocean Grey XF82. Not too much of it because we want it to be a nice thin mix. So what I'm going to do is going to use the stirring stick that we've used. But still got some of the colour on as well because in this amount it will give a little bit of a blue tinge and that's what we're trying to look for because I don't want a massive change of colour because when you look at the real reference photo it's got a, um, a slight difference between the two so there we go that's that on clean up around the 
smear brush. Okay, so we'll just check our flow. And as we can put it up to the other one, we can see it's more of a grey colour. Okay, this is where I get nervous. Uh, checking hands are clean. Okay, so we're going to come in. Same type of thing again. So what we're going to do is just going to start on the lower side and work our way up just a fraction. So happy with our flow. And we know it's just this bottom area down here. Okay, and we're just very gently trying to work our way up. Okay, and automatically I can see it's looking far too grey. But So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the top area where it sort of blends the two in. Okay, like that. A little bit over the shoulders, up the top here. Just what I'm trying to do is just give it a bit of a, a blended colour. So it doesn't shoot straight from what we're going to have will be the dark to the light. Okay, so we're going to do the same round the back end up with these uh, fins are sort of coming down. So we're just going to do some of that in there, a little bit across the top. Okay, so we're going to come in with my original choice, which was the XF19. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're just going to pop a a smaller colour cup on the top because we're going to need a little bit of this. Okay, so we're going to use quite a bit of thinners in here. So we've got about a millilitre of thinners going in. A few drops of paint. So it's very much a, a wet mix. There again, I'm still going to use this cocktail stick. It's got some blue on it because I want it to have a blue tinge and that's hopefully what it'll do. Good old mix, make sure you get right to the bottom. Okay, quick clean up. All right, check our flow. I'll pretend nobody's watching. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna start on the bottom and work our way up. So what I want to do is just try and grab this guy from the back ends, but not too close to be near that rudder. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna grab it on the wing. Okay, so we're going to start down the very, very bottom of this one and work our way up. Okay, and that's still too gritty. It's actually, so what we're going to do is tip half of that back in there. Clean the sides. Okay, we're going to add more thinners. The reason I know it's doing that is because it's coming out really speckly. And I want it to be more watery because I need to get in nice and close with this and give it a good old uh, spray round and try to blend the colours rather than just trying to overcoat. So by adding more thinners, it thins the paint, it stops its ability to cover or slows down its ability to cover. What you need to do then is blow all that thick paint because in this front end it's all going to be just paint. So get rid of that. You'll feel it as soon as the new stuff comes through because the pitch usually changes on your airbrush. And also, the actual um, paint comes out a lot faster. Okay, that's more like it. So what we're going to do now, we're going to try and put in this eye. So we know the eye is going to go in here. Okay, and we're just working our way up. We know we've got a gill system going to come in here. Just like that. Then we've got to do the underside this intake, blending it through, and then the same as we run down the back. So what we're going to do now is just try and give this tail some marks. So we're just going to cut up and hopefully put some lines in just like that. And if I seem to be rambling, that's just because I'm nervous as I'm doing this. But there we go, that's the type of thing we're going for. Okay, now don't forget, at any point we can come back with some blue, and we can do this with the blue. What we're going to do as well, we're just going to put a tiny bit of this grey, and we're just going to blend it down the back. So 
just a little bit, just down like that. But there we go, that's that one on. Now we're going to need to tidy up this eye just a little bit. So what we're going to do is get in there nice and close now. Tiny bit of pressure. Okay, and there we go. That's what I'm trying to achieve. So now, when you look at the references, uh, we're not sure if it wraps right round underneath the belly. So what we're going to do is just going to come under a little bit with this grey. Okay, and just sort of blend in both sides. And there we go. So we're looking just like that. So I'm just going to do the same on the other side.